Obviously, the game was similar to what, what it was last year, uh, when you think about it, except we were up 3 nothing instead of them at halftime. Uh, the mindset for our football team was real simple. Um, don't allow the, the emotion of the stadium uh, get to us early. Uh, that's what has happened the last two games that these guys have played. Um, they've been up 56 to 14. And if we could just withstand that first quarter of barrage of, of the fan base uh, and, and their football team, we just felt like if we could just make it a methodical game, we'd have a chance. And it kind of turned out that way. Now, we were fortunate. You know, we got a couple plays here or there. Um, but when those kind of games, that's what happens. You just kind of go back and forth. Field position is critical. This game kind of played out like last year's game, to be quite honest. Uh, there's a lot of similar Similar things that, that happened. Um, fouls were big in this game. Fouls were big, boy. It just either prevented drives, prevented plays, giving people other opportunities. Um, but uh, our kids did a great job with their resolve of coming on the road and playing a really, really good football team. Uh, Coach has built him a heck of a program here, and uh, I can't say enough about him and his football team. They're tough. They're physical. And you have to play that way if you're going to have a, have a chance to try to beat them. And uh, we were fortunate. Um, the foul at the end, hey, you know, the guy missed some kicks. Uh, our kicker's been really good. He's made some kicks. It's kind of interesting. It, it got down to the kicking game. And so we're fortunate. Um, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, offensively, uh, we knew that it was going to be very difficult to run the football. Uh, we came in with a plan of trying to get it out of our quarterback's hand fast because they can, they can hit the quarterback. They hit him a couple times. But at the end, um, the kid did good, boy. He really did good. He made a lot of plays with his legs. And I think that's surprising for a lot of people, uh, the, his ability to run. And he's a smart runner. Uh, but it was in, when, it, when the last drive, when, when I talked to him, I said, here it is. He looked at me and said, Coach, I got it. I said, OK, here we go. Let's go. And uh, he did some things with his legs. I mean, he, he, he basically made a bunch of first downs that last drive, made some critical runs, a big third down run. I mean, he's, oh, fourth down. I mean, it's just, it's. He's going to be a good player one day. So we're fortunate enough uh, we got us a win, and uh, now we've got to get ready for uh, Pac-12 play, as they say. Uh, Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Coach, you've talked all year about Jaden's composure and his maturity. This almost seems like a coming-of-age game for him where he started what you hope is a legacy. Well, I think um, the more that we see of him play, and he's a freshman. He's not a senior. He's a freshman. This is his third football game as a collegiate athlete. Uh, and the first time he won a game on the road. Uh, so it says a lot about uh, the potential. But he needs help. He can't do it by himself. And we, we have to get better on offense. And we know that. Um, we, started <laughs> we started a left tackle as a freshman. Oh, boy. And a guard, you know, and, and, and um, 28 freshmen played today. And I don't want to get that overlooked. I want to make sure we understand that. And there's going to be some times where errors are made because of lack of experience. But I think as you're trying to build a program, that's, that's, that, that's what I'm here to do. Um, and um, I'm proud of them. This is a tough place to play. I mean, this is, this is a tough place. And uh, they never blinked. They never blinked. I mean, just, they just didn't. I mean, the score was what it was, and no, no one blinked. And when they scored, we went, okay, we'll get the ball back. And the defense got the ball back. Um, and I know how to, our coordinator feels, Danny, you know, and you'll hear from him. I mean, I know he's mad at him at the end because he wanted to just be done with it and get off the field, right? And uh, they made some plays. I mean, they, they got some good players. They made some plays. And at the end, you know, I'm, I'm asking him, okay, we're going overtime. What do you want to do? He said, I want to play defense, coach. I said, okay. And then lo and behold, there's a foul. And, uh, you know, the kid misses the next one. We don't go over that. Chris Cartman, Sun Nova Source. Mm -hmm. Herm, can you speak to the strategy and execution of what you were doing defensively, other than the touchdown where Crosswell was off the field? Uh, there was maybe a couple plays that you gave up, but not much. A couple things. We felt like our, our, our back end could match up with them in, in man coverage. And uh, Daddy did a good job of, of, of doing some things schematically up front to uh, rush the quarterback. 
and we just felt like we could man up against them. We have a pretty good secondary, um, and we just said this is what we're going to do. We're going to play man-to-man -man coverage a lot, and we did. And we just felt we had enough guys back there that could, you know, now we didn't do it all, all always right, but that's the strength of our defense is our secondary. And we've got some athletes back there. And the more they play and the more they put in these situations, the more they're going to improve. Now, we've got a lot of improvement to do. They caught ball. I had 290 yards passing. But I think at the end, when we needed to make some plays, we're able to do that. Coach Hodrabino, you know, Devil's Digest. I know the first two games offensively were, were much less smoother than you expected them to be, but there's something to be said about grinding out those two wins because you ground out one today instead of just coming off you know, two blowout wins, and now you're facing an excellent defensive team in Michigan State. You no doubt. You know, I, I live my life this way in Tampa. We just call it buck ball. And now we had four Hall of Famers on defense, but it was 10 to 3. Nine to six, every once in a while, we'd, you know, we'd score a touchdown and it might be 13 to seven. But um, hard to win that way, especially in college football, because of the, of the rules and the way everybody throws the ball around. But we're, we've been able to do that. I mean, I, I, I do know this. Um, <laughs> we've given up 21 points. I don't know. I, 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 I've been around a lot of football. That's, I think that's good. <laughs> and if you do that, uh, you have a chance to win football games. Now, it's not, it's not pretty. It's, not, it's nothing you'd go want to pay to watch, right? But we're going to play the way we have to play right now because it's, that's appropriate for us. And when the offense gets going, and then, then all of a sudden maybe other things will happen. But right now, we got to keep it tight. And that's a credit to Danny and his staff and them players. I mean, them kids have given up 21 points in three games. 21, I can't say it again, 21 points in college football in three games. That's pretty good. It might count. Now, some people may say it's not, but I'm going to say it is. And I'm the head coach. I get to say that. Coach, ahead of that, Greg Moore, Arizona Republic, uh, ahead of the last drive, did you have a message? Offensively, Greg? Yes, offensively, okay. uh, when Eno stretches it out, scores. Yeah. Jaden was running a lot more, but he wasn't sliding early. No. I'm certain that was function of down and distance and game time. Did you tell him? Yeah, well, I told him, big fella, it's time. And he went, I got you, coach. But you see where he went. He went out of bounds. He's a smart runner. He's a smart runner. This guy is, uh, he's pretty savvy as a quarterback. You know, and I think it caught people by surprise that he would take off and run like that. I mean, one, it was third and what, 15 or something like that? He takes off. He, he, he took, he, he saw the coverage, and as soon as he saw it, he took off. He said, I can make it. And he made it. And I told him, I said, when you start running now, you know when the journey's over, you run out of bounds. And he did. He ran out of bounds, made some critical, critical first downs. Now, he was looking downfield, but they did a nice job in coverage. So you can imagine going forward now, they're probably going to have a spy guy on him because now they're going to say he's a running quarterback. And he ran good today when we needed him to. Herm Fred Huben, uh, CBS here in Lansing. Yes, sir. I know this victory is about your team and your players, but I also know you seem to have a fondness for Coach D'Antonio. You took an extra second with him, shaking his hand. You could feel the whole place ready to brace for a celebration. Is that a little strange? No, I, you know, I, I, uh, I admire men in this profession that understand that it's not about them. It's about the game of football. And he's done that ever since he got into the coaching business. And I've watched him from afar. Uh, I've watched him build his program. And he is an ambassador for the game of football. And when young men leave his watch, they're better for it. They're better men. He gets it. And uh, we talked about that uh, in the pregame. Uh, saw a coach. Uh, and we talked about, you know, hey, you know, this is bigger than us. And it is. We're just stewards. Uh, his old, you know, he texted me last night. He says, I'm going to see you. I said, I'm waiting on you. And he comes out, and he's a good friend. And he gets it, too. 
This is, this is about winning games. It's about winning championships. It's about doing all that stuff. But it's about building better men, too, okay? You can't, just, you can't be selfish and say, well, this is all about me, because it's not about us. It's about these kids. What can we do to better them? How does this great game help them? Those two men I just mentioned that are at Michigan State, the basketball coach and, and, and the football coach, they've done that. They've done that. And, 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 and I'm, I'm glad I can look at men that kind of feel the same way I do about this game. Herm, um, we, we only get to see Jaden like after practice or you know, on, on the field a little bit, not a whole lot, but can, can you just Think of one example where he has acted uh, like his age, um, whether it's in a yeah. meeting or you know, oh, that yeah. he's just rattled, confused, something. He, he's, he's, he's always laughing and making jokes. I mean, you don't see that. Um, he's on the sideline. When I walked over there in the fourth quarter, and I'm going, you all right? Coach, we're good. He just comes here, we're good. I said, really? I said, you know, we haven't moved the ball past 50 yet, but we're good. Coach, we're good. I said, all right. And I told him at the end, I said, now we're running out of time. I said, this is it. This is, this is the drive. You got to go do it. And um, offensive guys, um, they never gave up. They just kept playing. It's similar to last year, guys. It's the game of last year when you think about it, except they had the ball and they were able to move it down there. And, um, but that's kind of, I think we all knew that. We just, we wanted to make it a game like that. We didn't want to get into a game where we're down 28 and we're fighting uphill out of halftime. You know, it just, so we, we, got the, we got the half settled and then it was just a matter of, let's just keep playing and see what happens. Two more, Chris. Herm, can uh, you just tell us what went into the decision to move Cabral back to center and put the true freshman out there at left tackle and how you think that functioned? Well. That was our best option to solidify some things, to move Cabral back in there, and that way he could, he could help the guard situation. Um, we felt like we, had a, we have a young, talented left tackle. And if we're truly trying to build a program, then you got to play those guys. And now people would say, why would you play them against Michigan State? Well, we don't have an alternative. I mean, we, we, that's what we have, you know, and, and – um, we don't have a lot of depth there. We have a lot of young guys on this football team. I, I think next year there only might be five seniors on this whole football team. And it's going to be on incoming freshmen that we recruit again. It'll be sophomores and juniors. That'll be the football team. And so we got to play that way. And we, we just every week we have to come up with a plan to how, how to try to win a football game, you know. And the more you win, the more confident you get. But we got a lot of work to do. It's it's hard. This, these games are hard, man. This is hard. You know, this is, oof. it's just every possession is like, really? You know, it's just, it's hard. It's hard living. But I don't know. I had a really good job, you know, and uh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I think about that sometimes when it's three to nothing at halftime. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Really? Why would you do this? Because I love it. I really do. I love the players. I love the sense of it all. I really do. You know, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just something about it. It's just nothing like it. It's nothing like doing this. It's just, it's a lot of fun. It really is. A lot of heartache, but a lot of fun. Coach Carson Field, Inferno Intel. Mm -hmm. What do you tell Eno Benjamin in a game like this against Michigan State's defense where he's forced to get fewer carries? How do you keep him positive? Because he's a captain of the team, and he wants to do whatever it takes to win. And we had a plan of saying, look, these guys played two football games, and it was minus three rushing yards. We have two freshmen starting on the offensive line and a freshman quarterback. If we were to try to run the ball on these guys, I would have been sitting up here, and you would have asked me, Coach, why would you do that? That's what you would ask me. You literally. And you ain't been around football long enough to ask me that, but you'd ask me that, all right? Why would you try to run against these guys, minus three, right? And then I would have been answering that question. So every week, I think sometimes we fail to realize the plan is to win the game, right? Is that, 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 I mean, that's the ultimate plan. It's like, how do you do this? Well, we felt that we had to do something a little bit different. Uh, a lot of our runs were wide passes. 
right, to the receivers. That was a run. That, that was a, to me, that's a run, all right? Now, Eno wasn't involved in it, but Eno was good. Eno knew, he said, look, it's going to be the, every once in a while we're going to get it to you. But it's kind of ironic, though. The only touchdown we scored, who scored it, young man? Tell me, who scored a touchdown? You know okay, there you answered your own question. You're good. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. All right, I got to go. I ain't bothering you, young man. I'm just messing with you. We got a good